question. Yeah. Why do they always use the apple in the Bible for Adam and Eve? Why mm -hmm. isn't that like an orange or like a mango or you know another fruit? Why is it always an apple? You know, Joni and uh, to our to those who are watching, actually it's not apple. And I'd like to read the verse. It's from uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. No word, no apple word there. <laughs> but the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, I, I like to speak about this. How did the popular conception that the fruit was the apple. And you know, this is even portrayed in uh, popular culture, in literature and in art. The Hebrew word used for apple is peri. That's the original language. And peri means fruit. Now, here comes uh, the apple. When St. Jerome was translating the, the Bible from uh, the original languages, from uh, Hebrew to Latin, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil the word malus came in. Malus, okay? He had several options of uh, translating peri, but he hit upon the idea of translating peri as malus, which in Latin, take that word. Now we have words uh, in English that have several meanings. In Latin, malus has two different meanings. As an adjective, malus means bad or evil. Spiritus malus, bad spirit. As a noun, it seems to mean an apple. Malum is apple in our own sense of the word, coming from the very common tree known officially, the, those uh, botanists know this, malus pomila. So when Jerome came up with a very good pun, he said malus, okay, for both, then the translation stuck. But one thing about the apple, it's desirable. And so this desirability brought Eve and Adam to go for the forbidden fruit and the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. So acting funny pala siya, no? oh, there's yeah. a pun. <laughs> so that's really interesting, malus, because from malice. Yeah, the word know, malice comes malice. from malus. Yeah, right. You know what? After the day, I think I'm going to see the apple in a different light. Just because I already know that it's not the devil's fruit. <laughs> <laughs> My father Joel's insight. I really appreciate the significance of the apple. And we all know that saying that an apple a day keeps a doctor away. You know what, there's this realization that comes now that an apple of wisdom a day will keep the evil away. <laughs> yeah, even if apple and evil share the same Latin word, malum. And even when we teach catechism and correct our students that the fruit in the book of Genesis is not an apple, we see the influence of St. Jerome's translation. 16th century paintings by Lucas Cranach and Titian show Adam and Eve under particularly tempting apple trees. And then in the 17th century when Milton, John Milton, the English poet, wrote Paradise Lost, and he was uh, writing about Genesis, the forbidden fruit was an apple with a capital A. But despite all the, this controversy, we say that this dish of Chef Martin is desirable.